Welcome to a shutter card tutorial. I'm Shari Philomahala here at the Graphic 45 headquarters and today I'm going to teach you how to take some ordinary card bases and turn them into some extraordinary show-stopping cards. These cards this month have been created for us by Ginger Rop of My Sister Scrapper and Ginger really outdid herself this month with these super fun cards that feature a belly band, a gate fold, and the ultimate surprise of the shutter effect on the inside. So they're going to be so much fun to learn how to create that you'll want to reuse this technique over and over again. In this tutorial, I'll teach you how to create three different styles of the shutter card and then using those templates and your leftover products from your kit, you can create another three so in total, you'll be creating at six cards using our Graphic 45 Card Club Volume 8. This kit this month features our Midnight Tales 8x8 paper pad. You get 24 double-sided sheets in this paper pad. You'll also be getting our Midnight Tales uh, journaling cards where you get 36 different size journaling cards as well as the heavy duty black card bases and envelopes. And these are larger than what we have been working with lately. And they are five inches by seven inches. So it gives it even more uh, room to really show off all of our gorgeous Graphic 45 details. And then of course you'll be getting the Midnight Tales chipboard to add some fun dimension to your cards. The colored project sheet with step-by-step -step directions and the Graphic 45 bag to store all your goodies in. So if you are not yet a subscriber to our G45 Card Club, you can do that by hopping on over to our website, g45papers.com, or you could head to your local G45 retailer to become a subscriber and pick up the kit there as well. We do encourage you to pick up these kits sooner than later because likely they will sell out quickly. And of course, if you wanna follow along with what you've got at home, you can do that. I'll give you the, the dimensions to the uh, card bases as well as the papers that we're cutting. So of course you can use what you've got in your stash and create something spooktacular with us. So go ahead, grab your supplies and then join me for this step-by-step -step tutorial. Grab your project sheet. If you don't have the kit, you can always pick up our project sheets for free on our website at g45papers.com. Just go up to the inspiration tab on the top right and go down to project sheets and you can find over 30 different printable project sheets there, including this one. The first thing we wanna do is prepare all of our card bases. So your card bases are coming like this where they're a nice standard heavy duty five by seven. Of course, if you're making these from home, it would be a 10 by seven and we don't want that center score line since we're doing this nice gatefold shutter card so we are going to prepare all the card bases you want to create so if you're doing the three cards with us do three if you're doing all six uh, do all six so the first thing you want to do is just kind of burnish out that center score line i'm going to flip this over at that point and I am going to score at two and a half inches. And with these, since they're so nice and thick, I want to go over that a number of times. So once it starts to get a little bit glossy in the center, like it just has here, now I can move on to my next score, which is seven and a half. And I will do the same here. We can go ahead and crease and go from the center out. So fold on that score line, take your bone folder and work from the center from one side to the other. So there you have, now we've created our gatefold base and you'll do the same um, with all of the cards you would like. So if you're creating your own card bases from scratch again, that is going to be 10 inches by 7 inches and you don't need the center score line you just need these two which are two and a half and seven and a half 
card one. It's got this gorgeous belly band. On the back side, we've got pumpkins, a postcard, borders, and a stamp, and some magic going on on the inside. Step one, we're gonna take pumpkin patch, and this piece has been cut to four and three quarters by six and three quarters. This will be adhered to the back of our card base. Pumpkins up, and then grab your four by six enchanting postcard from your journaling pack, and adhere this postcard side up on the back side of your card base. The beautiful part about this is, of course, it adds some extra dimension and beauty, but it's also going to give our card base some strength since it had that uh, center score line. From our abracadabra page, I'm just gonna cut out this black cat stamp and trim off any excess orange. And this is just going to adhere right over where it says to add a stamp. And I like to put it on an angle so it gives it more of that authentic vibe from Pumpkin Patch, that where we cut this piece from. We are gonna cut this leftover piece to be two and a quarter by six and three quarters. And then from a second sheet of Pumpkin Patch, we'll cut another piece that's gonna be two and a quarter by six and three quarters. Now we're going to adhere these panels onto the front of our card. So we want the checkered side up and one on each side. Step two from Abracadabra, we've trimmed out two of these cute little pumpkin borders and these are two and a quarter inch. Adhere one to the top left, leaving about an eighth of an inch from the top and one on the bottom right. Again, leaving about an eighth of an inch of that checkered board showing. And then cut out this full moon stamp from the Abracadabra page and adhere it to the top right. Step three, from the B side of Pumpkin Patch, we've cut this piece to be four and three quarters by six and three quarters. And then adhere it to the inside center of your card base. And then from the B side scraps of our Pumpkin Patch paper, we're gonna cut out two pieces that are gonna be two and a quarter by one and a quarter. Adhere those to the bottom left and right hand side of your inside flaps so they're nice and flush with the bottom of your center. Cut out two more of these pumpkin borders from Abracadabra that are two and a quarter and then add those pumpkin borders. Step four from Hocus Pocus, this measures to be three and a half by eight inches. Now we are going to score this at a half inch as well as seven and a half inches. And then fold both of those flaps under so the purple is showing. Next, we are going to add some adhesive to these tabs. I'm just going to be using some score or some dry adhesive. If you don't have any dry adhesive, uh, hold off on that. Now I'm going to do a little bit of marking. You can use your ruler or your scoreboard, however you prefer. I want to know where the center of this is, and since it's three and a half, um, that would be one and three quarters. So I'm just going to mark it there. And then I want to mark at one and a quarter from either side. I do actually want this marking to be in the center though, so now that I marked it up and I know where my center is. I can add my little pencil line to one quarter of an inch and from the center down. Now from here, we need to create our little peekaboo window. So what Ginger used was uh, either a die or a, a circle punch that's two and a half inches. However, you can go a little bit smaller, a little bit larger. You can do a square, uh, whatever you have. So if you've got a die, you've got a punch, um, you can do it that way. I, however, don't have a two and a half inch punch. I have a two 
and a three and three quarters. But at this point, if I did have the correct punch, the two and a half, I would go ahead and use that top pencil line and my punch and punch out my circle in the center. So if you are like me and you don't have a two and a half, um, I have some hacks for you. So this is done with a two and a half and it looks great. If you don't have a circle punch or a die at all, you can always do a square window. So we have the square that um, it's the same measurements as our other one that we um, cut the window measuring down from one and a quarter of an inch and then each side is a half of an inch over and it's four inches down. So that gives you a total of a two and a half inch window. So it'll look like this. If you do the two and three quarter inch window, I still uh, just did the one and a quarter inch down from the top and punched that out and that worked nicely. I could get it right in the center, which is great. However, my two inch punch, my EK success two inch punch, I couldn't get it centered um, just with the shape of my punch. So I did the same, I measured it down from an inch and a quarter and then punched. And then with my side that was, uh, which had more on, which, on one side than the other, I just trimmed off the excess, which was a quarter of an inch. So any of these, will work out for you. So these are my hacks where they're not the two and a half and those will work. Here is ginger sample that is two and a half. So um, can't wait to see what your little peekaboo slots look like. So let us know what works for you too. So next just take the top adhesive strip off of your window piece and then we're going to adhere that down on here but don't adhere the bottom piece down yet. You can see I may have messed up, but not to worry, we can figure this out. Step six from Hallow's Eve. We've trimmed out this All Hallow's Eve sentiment and we've trimmed it to be three and one quarter by four inches. And so we could have our sentiment centered. We did trim some off both ends. Of course, if you did the two inch punch and you trimmed a fourth of an inch off here, you'll wanna trim an additional eighth of an inch off either side if you have that two inch circle and you trimmed your piece down. But you can go ahead and see how it looks in your window at this point. So yours isn't adhered down at the bottom unlike mine. So yours will be a cinch to pull up and to adhere this in the right placement mine I'm just using some liquid adhesive and if you got carried away like I did you'll just kind of pull up your circle peekaboo part and put your sentiment where you'd like it and once you've done that we can go ahead and adhere down our sentiment at that point you can now adhere your bottom flap down as well Step seven, we've got our pumpkin patch and we've cut this to be seven and a half by three and a half. And we're gonna place this in our scoreboard with a seven inch half side across the top and score at a half of an inch and seven inches. Next, we are going to put it in our paper trimmer and trim right in half at three and three quarters. This helps to keep the images right side up and the tabs in the correct place. Add adhesive to those half inch tabs on both pieces. From here, we are going to mark a pencil line at one and three quarters of an inch from the opposite side of our score tape. So this is gonna be in the center. And then from the center point, we are going to mark a spot one and a half inches down and then from there we are going to take that dot and draw a line from our opposite from our score tape side to this corner to that dot that we created 
So a nice diagonal dot. And then we'll do the same on the other side, creating a triangle. Once you have drawn your triangle, you can take your scissors and cut that out. And of course, you can follow the same directions and do it on the opposite side, or you can use that as a template and draw your triangle and trim out So now we are gonna make the magic happen. So we are going to slide our pieces underneath our window over our sentiment. So I have one on the bottom and one that's over top of the pumpkins. And I'm going to have these be as nice and flat with the score lines on our card as possible and having them nice and flush with that like so and I'll do that with the other side too so while I'm pull pulling up my backing I'm just holding down putting some pressure to make sure that these pieces aren't gonna go anywhere I don't want them to go and then just slowly sliding these into place once they are nice and flush like this I'm gonna hold my center down and put one flap down continue to hold my center and put my other flap down and do a nice apply some pressure on both sides and now when we open it up it's magically been put together so you can see it now has created that gorgeous shutter effect you know, these techniques always seem so difficult. And then once you got them going and you figured it out, then it's easy breezy and you can recreate this over and over again in your albums and cards. So now you can see this doesn't want to stay closed. So we're going to create a belly band to fix that problem. So from Abracadabra, we've cut out another pumpkin border for the total eight inch size. And then from the B side of Hocus Pocus, We've cut a piece that's four inches by four and a quarter. Now we're gonna take our Hocus Pocus square and just hold it in the center of our card base. And then taking that pumpkin border, we are just gonna tuck some of it behind our Hocus Pocus in the center and then wrap it around to our front. And we do want to leave a little bit of room because this is going to be a sliding mechanism. So when we adhere all these pieces together, be sure that you're leaving a little bit of bulk. Now we have our folds in place. I'm just going to go ahead and add just a tiny bit of room. And then we will adhere our Hocus Pocus B-side onto our belly band. So I'm just gonna do a little bit of adhesive on either side. And then find the center. Making sure that you didn't glue your belly band down to that piece and it still does have an opening. And then slide it onto your card to make sure everything is fitting beautifully, making sure it's not gonna dry onto your card also. Then grab this a three by four magical journey card. Then grab this three by four magical journal card and we will adhere this onto our belly band closure and then add these three chipboard pieces 
So there you have it. We've completed card one, which that's the hard part. Now we know what we're doing and you are ready to create more cards. Using that same template that we created card one with, here is what you can create with your leftovers. So our belly band here is created with Hocus Pocus and these are just different ephemera cards. That's where you'll find these green plaid borders. This purple here is called Fairy Mischief. And then opening it up to your surprise. In here, we also have Hocus Pocus. The stripe back here is called Full Moon and these florals are called Magic is in the Air. And this is Fairy Mischief as well. Card two, this Magic Spells card. Gotta love that trick or treat sentiment in the center, a little bit of fussy cutting and some more gorgeous detail on the back. Step one for card two is taking full moon and cutting out two pieces that are four and three quarters by six and three quarters. And now we're going to adhere this on the back of our card base, making sure we're right side up. I mean, at this point, it doesn't matter, but when you adhere everything else, we want to make sure our back is also going the same direction. Next, grab this four by six journaling card with the witch on her broom and adhere her down. Using the B-side leftovers from Full Moon, we're going to cut out two pieces that are two and a quarter by six and three quarters and adhere those stripes onto your front panels. Take two more stamps from Abracadabra and adhere them into the top left hand corner. From Full Moon, cut out two more panels that are two and a quarter by six and three quarters. Adhere those to the inside panels of your card. With the remainder, we're gonna cut a piece that's three and a half by eight inches and then like we did with our first one, we're gonna score that on the eight inch side at a half of an inch and seven and a half inches. Fold on those score lines and add your adhesive and then use your die cut circle or uh, whatever you used for your first card and create your peekaboo uh, hole just the same way. And now we are going to adhere our large panel down now adhere that large panel in the center down and then let's learn our lesson from last time only take the top adhesive portion off and center this flush with the top of our card like so and then from your journaling cards we're going to take this cute little black cat that says trick-or-treat Just finding that placement. Like so. Once you have that placement, you can adhere that down. And then we can take our bottom adhesive off and seal this in. Mine had a little bit of bubble. I didn't get it quite how I wanted it. So let's try that again. And you can see by fixing one mistake, I made another mistake here. So I'm just going to fussy cut out a pumpkin from a spare ephemera card. Of course, you won't have this mistake, but just show, kind of showcasing how you can fix any errors and make it even more beautiful. And then now that that's been fussy cut out, I can just adhere my little pumpkin in that corner, making sure I'm not going to obstruct the folding. 
now we are going to be creating these shutter mechanisms so we did this from the b side of midnight tales and we originally cut it to be seven and a half by three and a half and um, did the scoring at a half of inch and the seven and a half inches and then cut that in half and did our triangles just like we did in step one and so now we can put them in place so it's just the same as we did the first go around i want one of these to be on top and one to be on the bottom this one has a bit of a, a blemish on it so i'm just going to use my black marker to cover that up So again, just finding that sweet placement and holding in place while you take off your adhesive backing. Now I'm just gonna make sure this is exactly where I want it to go. Nice and flush with my score line and I can shut that panel now. Take off the backing on the other side hold it in place and burnish down. And now we have created another gorgeous shutter card. Add a, another fussy cut stamp to the top left-hand corner. From this Magic Spells 4x3 ephemera card, we are gonna be fussy cutting out these pumpkins and this adorable cat, so I wanna just grab some of that purple in my fussy cut this time around. So it's up to you. You can go as close as you want to your kitty cat or the pumpkins, but I'm gonna leave a little bit of a border. It's always such a fun way to embellish your projects with your leftovers by just cutting up your scraps, your ephemera cards, and adding some extra interest. So there you have it. Now we can adhere this cute little piece down. And it's even bringing this pumpkin in nicely. Step four, we're gonna create a belly band. So we've taken the B side of Hocus Pocus and we've got this to be one inch by eight inches. And then we've trimmed the All Hallows Eve border out as well. I'm just going to adhere my All Hallows Eve border on top of my Hocus Pocus strip. Of course, we can trim off that edge, but since it's just going to be hidden i'm just going to leave it there maybe it'll be helpful and then from the b side of midnight tales we've cut this piece to be four and a half by three and a half now wrap your strip around your card making sure you're leaving a little bit of space so we can slide this with ease onto our card and Let's go ahead and adhere this down, making sure it can slide off and we're not adhering it down to our card base. And then adhere your magic spells four by three ephemera card and add this boo decorative chipboard. Using that same template, this is what we've created with our leftovers. We've used Hocus Pocus for the base and the back has Hollow's Eve on it. Our little belly band also is made with Hollow's Eve and a border strip. The backing of this is made from a pumpkin patch and it's got some chipboard and ephemera, or journaling cards rather. And then when you open up this beauty, there is Hollow's Eve, which is the green pumpkins. This has uh, been pieced together beautifully with our Hocus Pocus as the circle and the pumpkin patch is going to um, do those tops and then this is just a postcard that has been nicely cut 
to work as that's uh, two postcards that have been cut to work as the uh, shutter mechanism card three is this purple beauty it's got this cute little belly band and on the back we've got these little fairy goblins postcard and this gorgeous surprise inside card three is step one from fairy mischief cut two pieces that are going to be four and three quarters by six and three quarters adhere one to the back center of the card grab this four by six midnight tales postcard adhere the postcard to the back center and then take another one of these little abracadabra stamps and adhere over this postage area from the b-side of magic in the air we're going to cut out two pieces that are going to be two and a quarter by six and three quarters adhere these to your front panels adhere that second piece of fairy mischief to the inside card base now it's time to create our window piece so from the b-side of hocus pocus we've cut this to be three and a half inches by eight inches and we've scored at half of an inch and seven and a half inches added adhesive there and then added our window and then from hollows eve we've cut out this magic in the air cut apart and we've centered this so it's three and a quarter by four inches now we can adhere this top part to the top center of our card base on the inside and find the right placement for our secret sentiment i like to use a wet adhesive for these parts since i can maneuver it around to find exactly where i want it to go and i've removed my bottom backing and this will just adhere down on the bottom from the b-side of magic in the air we're going to create our shutter mechanism so again this total was seven and a half by three and a half we scored at a half of an inch and seven inches added our adhesive cut it in half at three and three quarters and did our triangle method to get our shutter piece like so now we can make the magic happen just by sliding our pieces underneath our peekaboo hiding our sentiment once you find the placement you like we can take off our adhesive backing so again I want this to be flush with the score line and also flush with my other piece so I can close one side for now and then checking to make sure everything is where I want it to go now we can adhere the second side and voila we've got our cute little shutter sentiment add a fussy cut stamp to the top right hand side and then take this magic in the air from our abracadabra and this is going to go about an eighth of an inch from the bottom on our center hocus pocus panel we trimmed out these little fairy goblins from one of our three by four journaling cards and they're going to go right inside of this bottom corner i'm trying to slip it underneath this purple mechanism but if it won't go all the way i can just trim off my excess like so 
And then from here, this is just a scrap from our signature page. I'm going to cut out this cute fairy hiding underneath the mushroom. And I'll adhere her just in this top corner on a bit of a diagonal. So we have completed the inside of our card. Here is a fun technique. It's mixing and matching these journaling cards to get the right color and images that you want. So I'm just taking one four by six and trim that around the orange border. And then from there, I'm going to take this six by four and turn it into a four by six by flipping it and adhering my new image over the top of the old one. Now I'm taking a scrap from our full moon paper that is a one inch by eight inches. And we're just going to create another belly band just like we've done with the other two. Make sure you can slide that off after you've created it. And then decorate with this Hocus Pocus chipboard and this full moon stamp. And we can add our belly band onto our card base. And then using that same template, you can create this fun piece. This one is starring our Midnight Tales signature page, the B-side Hocus Pocus. And the back side of this is um, Magic in the Air. We've got a nice ephemera card, some chipboard, our abracadabra belly band. Back here is also the signature page of Midnight Tales. And then once we slide this off inside, you can see we've got more Midnight Tales and magic in the air and some great cut aparts from the signature page and from an ephemera card. So I am just absolutely loving these shutter cards and learning, of course, a new technique. We hope that you've enjoyed creating these cards along with us and that you've learned something new. We uh, would love to see your creations. So go ahead and share them on Instagram using that graphic 45 hashtag. And if you're looking for more great card tutorials or even other off the page tutorials, Every month we post great new videos, so be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and then hit that notification bell so you are alerted every time we're learning something new. We thank you for joining us and as always, happy paper crafting.